Hey, it's certainly a pleasure to be here with you uh, today. Uh, welcome to the IG seminar. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Ed Hartman. I'm DB's Inspector General. My primary responsibility as IG is to oversee all of our departments, chapters, and members, and to ensure that everybody's in compliance with the Constitution and bylaws of the organization from A to Z. Um, so it's uh, quite a quite a lot uh, to to cover. And every year I try to um, uh, find a theme or find a topic to discuss at the convention. And one thing really stood out to um, us at the national organization last year. About this time of the year when we started reviewing annual financial reports of chapters and departments in terms of what our chapters and departments are doing in terms of uh, spending their, their money. So with that being said, Today we're going to talk about what we should be doing as a chapter and as a department with our donors' funds. And one thing that we have to remember is that funds given to the DAD are not ours. We're the vessel for which those funds are trans or transferred to provide service to donors and their families in the organization. So we're simply facilitating the funds that we receive from the generous public, right? So at all levels, whether it be at the chapter level, the department level, at the national level, we have a moral and ethical responsibility to ensure that we are doing what we're supposed to be doing with those funds. And so, yeah, this, this one's just a little, it's not loud enough, but I'm good, I'm good. Thank you. Um, that way I can kind of cruise around a little bit. Because I know Kevin down here is about ready to doze off, so I might sneak up on it. <laughs> Before we get too far along in this, and, and of course, uh, wanting to get started on time, I wanted to make sure that we had some time for Q&A at the end as well. So um, we'll have the opportunity to ask some questions and uh, get some answers. So again, it's our responsibility to ensure that we spend our donors' money on the programs for which they were intended. So, kind of simply put, what does that mean? You know, what does it mean to make sure that we spend our money on the programs for which we raise them for? So, anytime that we do a fundraiser in the community, right? Uh, especially at the chapter level, whether it's for Get Me Not or, you know, for state fair, the county fair, and we're asking the general public for funds, um, we should be telling them what we're doing as an organization uh, that would encourage them to support us, right? We should talk about our transportation network. We should talk about our transport. Uh, I'm sorry, our DSO, CSO programs, our DABS programs, uh, our local veterans assistance uh, program, and then the fact that as an organization in our community, we provide financial relief to those needy veterans who might fall upon hard times. So we make a promise to. Uh, the community when we're out there raising money that we're going to do uh, We're going to spend those funds in the fashion for which they were raised. So that's part of keeping our promise, right? Um, not just to the veterans uh, that we serve, but also to our donors. Because without our donors, we cannot uh, fulfill our mission at all. What are acceptable DAD programs to be funded by DAD entities? And of course, we follow this model at all levels, but in the national organization, departments, uh, chapters, but uh, we certainly uh, look at what we have done historically. What is DAD known for? And since the beginning of time, since the beginning of DAD, obviously we're known for our service to veterans and families, right? Our CSO, our DSO programs. We're known for our transportation network. Uh, we're known for our voluntary service programs in the hospitals and communities, our hospital service coordinator programs, uh, and then again, uh, our direct support to veterans and their families in our local communities. Uh, of course, the National Service Foundation, Charitable Service Trust, and the Columbia Trust are all programs that certainly could be provided or could be supported by chapters and departments as well. So that's a picture of kind of what we can support in terms of DAD. What are we not supposed to be supporting? What are we prohibited from supporting uh, in terms 
of DAD as an organization. So we have a very specific charter purpose, and that's to provide service, free programs of service for disabled veterans and their families, right? That's the only thing that we're supposed to be doing. That's what our tax exemption status is uh, based upon from the Internal Revenue Service. So as an organization, when we raise money, we should not be turning around and giving those funds to any other entity. And as I mentioned at the onset, we noticed last year in reviewing some of the financial reports that there's money going everywhere at the chapter level, at the department level, to programs like Boy Scouts, Girl Scouts, JROTC, church groups, first responder organizations, civic groups, and then probably the biggest no no of them all are political organizations. Um, we are obviously a nonpartisan organization, we cannot take part in politics, but as a nonprofit organization with a federal charter that is provided to us by Congress and our IRS tax exemption provided by the Internal Revenue Service, we have to spend our money on the programs for which we are raising those funds for. So while it's great and it's understandable, I know that a lot of chapters uh, benefit from having Boy Scout troops, Girl Scout troops, JROTC programs, other organizations coming out and helping us with our Hippinock programs. That's absolutely fine and dandy and great. We appreciate it all day long, but we can't turn around and give them a portion of the proceeds from the funds that we just raised. If they want to help us, and, and, and many times that is the case, is that they have a certain amount of volunteer hours that they have to fulfill in order to get a certain badge or something, uh, that's what they're there for. So, they're there to help us to support their cause, and we shouldn't, therefore, be turning around and providing a portion of the proceeds that we just raised for the not to uh, give back to them in recognition. Um, you know, JROTC program, same thing. Um, you know, the people always make the, the point or uh, make the argument that, well, they will be veterans. Well, they, they might. They might not. <laughs> but they're not right now, so we can't help them right now. Everything that we do as an organization has to be centered and focused on providing free programs of service to disabled veterans and their families. So with that being said, what about other veteran organizations? Are we able to financially support other veteran-related charities? In general, the answer is no. Uh, and let me give, give you a good example here. Um, of course, we're all dual members of other organizations, whether that be the Legion or AMVETS or BFW. Um, you know, when we go into those meetings, uh, we should not be acting in the best interest of another organization, organization to the detriment of DAD. In other words, if I'm a member of the BFW post and you know, work, work on hard times. We, the air conditioner just went out, the roof's leaking, uh, the plumbing's backed up, but we don't have any money. So at the next post meeting, you know, I should not be going in there as a DAB member knowing that DAB's doing pretty well and that uh, we've got some reserves in the bank and we've got some money to spend. I should be going in there and saying, hey, uh, at the next DAV chapter meeting, I'm going to make a recommendation that we give the VFW post $10,000 to buy a new air conditioner, patch the roof, and fix the plumbing. That's, that's their responsibility. If they want to own a building, they want to operate a building, it's their responsibility to raise money in their community to support their programs. DAV certainly should not be doing that. So, that's what we're talking about when we're talking about the general purpose operations or the profit of an the charity um, in terms of getting them a direct donation. It is permissible for a DV entity to provide funding to another veterans organization 
If that organization is hosting or sponsoring or promoting or conducting an event that falls in line with our charter purpose of providing services to disabled veterans and their families. A good example of that is stand down. Local BFW host is hosting a stand down for uh, uh, homeless veterans in the community. Uh, they come to DAD, ask for financial support to help um, put the program on. Absolutely nothing wrong with that at all. However, there's got to be a caveat that when the money is provided to that DFW post, that it be earmarked, specifically be used for this particular program, and also, more importantly, the chapter should receive recognition back from the DFW indicating that they received that donation so that we can provide both the Internal Revenue Service and or our general donors in the community, if ever questioned, why we gave a $10,000 donation to another organization. Well, it's in line with our charter purpose of providing services to disabled veterans and their families that have stand down. We certainly wanted to help them and support them in that cause. So we did. Um, and of course, there are other uh, examples of, of events and opportunities that might crop up other than stand downs. But the one thing that we always have to ask ourselves is how am I going to answer the general public if we're ever questioned about a donation that we made as an organization to another organization? And if the answer is that it is directly in line and supports our charter pr uh, purpose of helping disabled veterans and their families in the community, we're always going to be on the right side of things. But if we wind up telling the community that we decided to give BMW uh, $10,000 to put a new roof on because they do good things in the community, that's certainly wrong. Because at the end of the day, they're a nonprofit organization just like we are. They have every opportunity to raise funds just like we do with their programs. If a donor wanted their funds to be spent or provided to that organization, they would give it to that organization in the first place. They did. They gave that money to DAB. So they trust, and it's our remember, it's our obligation, our responsibility to spend those monies on DAB programs and service in our communities. I just noticed our national commander has been standing back there in the back of the room for a few minutes. I want to acknowledge Commander Marshall. Thank you for stopping in and visiting with us for a little while this afternoon. So, the quickest way to lose the trust of our community is to not be good stewards of funds, right? You know, we have to safeguard funds, we have to protect funds, make sure that they're not uh, uh, stolen, misallocated, used for other purposes. If we do that and the community finds out, guess what? Our support from our communities and our uh, individuals in, in uh, each state at the department level dries up. Those businesses uh, that support department conventions and department events and the transportation network, that quickly dries up and goes away because DAB is not doing what they're supposed to be doing with those funds. So it's our obligation and our responsibility to absolutely positively make sure that we support DAB's programs of services. This next one's kind of interesting. What about supporting, this is a very generic organization, Acme Reads for Fallen Veterans. Obviously, we're talking about a certain organization, but I'm not going to mention them by name. I can't tell you the disappointment all of us see and have on our face when we look at an annual financial report and we see these huge sums of money from our apartment, from a chapter, going out to an organization that is itself a for-profit entity. So, donations to support Acting Greece for Fallen Veterans, better known as, I didn't say it. <laughs> A 
again, they are their own nonprofit organization, but they're a nonprofit organization within a for-profit company. And that for-profit company, guess what they're in the business of? Making wreaths. Cutting down trees and making wreaths. So, not that there's anything wrong with that, but if they want to have a nonprofit organization to have this program be nationally recognized, that's fine, that's great. We endorse that. But we shouldn't be supporting that. We shouldn't be providing DAB funds to support not only their nonprofit aspect of that, but more importantly, the bigger picture is supporting that for profit entity that is directly benefiting from this nonprofit. So, interestingly enough, I mean, I don't know how many folks. Uh, do a lot of research or uh, do any any uh, investigations or do a little digging before they get to an organization. But I encourage you all to do a little bit of digging and see what you can find in terms of uh, some of these organizations that are out there. Of course, as we all know, since 9-11, veterans charities have cropped up all over the place. Everybody wants to be uh, an advocate or a supporter of veterans. And that's great if they're legitimate. But unfortunately, there are many that are not legitimate. They have the best interest of themselves at heart and not of the veteran community. So we have a responsibility to make sure that we, if we are supporting a program or an organization that has an event or an activity, that is in line with our federally chartered purpose of providing service to disabled veterans and their families, that we research them, make sure that they are doing with those funds exactly what they say that they're supposed to do. Because at the end of the day, we have to answer to our veterans. <clears throat> so, in reviewing annual financial reports, of course, many times it requires us and it prompts us to call the chapter, call the department and say, hey, what were you, what were you doing making a donation to this group, this organization? It has nothing to do with the same values or the families or our commercial department purpose. And they say, well, they're, they're quasi-affiliated. Um, there's a connection there between the military and them or the commander or the president of this organization and veterans. I think one of the, the best examples or uh, pleadings that I heard uh, from a chapter commander was uh, it was a donation made on behalf of the chapter to a chapter member's son who was eight years old, was on a traveling baseball team, and he did, I don't remember what it was, $2,500, bucks, $3,000 to go to a big uh, baseball tournament in Florida somewhere. How do you justify that to the community? I mean, and their argument was, well, it's the, it's the son of, of a disabled veteran. Well, you're right, it is, but how is that $2,500 helping disabled veterans and their families in the community? It's not. So it's really easy and it's simple to draw a line between something unrelated and veterans. We can do that and, and draw those conclusions all day long, but at the end of the day, we just have to make sure that we can look our public in the eye that gives us money and funds for the veterans for We're giving out programs or other fundraisers we're doing in the community and tell them that we are spending their money on what we tell them we're supposed to be uh, Spending on. As I mentioned, um, this this whole discussion really kind of began after the convention last year when we uh, started reviewing annual financial reports for year end 2021. Uh, we all know that our annual financial reporting period is the same as our membership period, which is July 1st. Through June 30th. So our 2022 year just ended June 30th, right? So 
What's that mean? It's time for everybody to start putting their annual financial reports together and getting them to either the department and or the national organization by September 30th. So, what are some of the things that we look at when uh, reviewing uh, annual financial reports? And again, it's our responsibility, ultimately, to make sure that we're doing what we're supposed to with the money. It's my responsibility when we identify that funds aren't going where they're supposed to, to reach out to departments and chapters and question and, and get answers and, and figure out what's going on. So as a result of that, we had um, required details for certain specific fundraisers, uh, certain expenditures, um, donations and other gifts. So when we're looking at annual financial report, typically uh, we'll find that uh, uh, the report is not uh, accurate. In other words, uh, how much money came in from a particular fundraiser, how much money went out to a particular program. Um, so most expense lines on the AFR certainly require a schedule. So if you've got uh, a line item for grants for homeless or needy veterans, you just can't put a dollar amount on there and say this is the amount of money that you spent on homeless and needy veterans during the course of the year. You gotta break that down in detail. You gotta you know, tell us at minimum the name of the veteran that you helped, how much that was, how much money was provided to them, or how much support was provided to them, and what the support was it for rent, was it for electricity, was it for an automobile repair so that they can get to and from their job to help support their family. We have to be accountable, not only to the public, but to each other as members, as chapter members. We have to ask questions. Don't just take the word of the treasurer that's standing up there and giving a financial report that, yes, this is what we've done during the course of last month, this is what we've done during the year. Make them show you. Because unfortunately, there have been instances where, you know, a chapter has been led to believe that there are, you know, there, there's $100,000 in the bank because the chapter treasurer gets a report every month and we still have that $100,000 in the bank. And then, Come to find out, because they've never, the chapter has never asked for copies of bank statements, found out that there is no $100,000 anymore. He's been using it his own personal piggy bank or ATM machine for the last year or two. So be accountable to each other, right? Uh, not only to the public, but be accountable to each other. Ask to see statements as members of the chapter, as members of the department. So I mentioned earlier about uh, getting recognition letters for donations. Remember we were talking about if we're going to support another organization to, to uh, fund a particular program that is in line with our charter purpose of providing service to disabled veterans and their families. It's our responsibility to get a recognition letter back from that entity saying, hey, you know, hey, thank you, DAV Chapter 1, for your $5,000 contribution to support uh, our homeless veterans stand down on August 7th, 2022, where the case might be. Because, of course, those are certainly required on the most importantly, because they're required on the annual financial report, you've got provide some documentation and some validation that that's where the money was spent. But it also makes it easier to share with the public if you need to. So other mistakes we see, not providing the appropriate uh, schedules for expenditures, not uh, providing the correct bank statements, excluding the names of authorized bank signers and bank names and locations. The reason that that's important is obviously um, Unfortunately, on occasion, there's the necessity to uh, revoke the charter of a chapter or uh, not necessarily the department, that's not happening. Um, not to say that it could be, it wouldn't, but it's typically a chapter. And so, therefore, the appropriate department would need to know where those funds are located so that they could go and gather them uh, and keep them in the family rather than have them uh, 
shuffle off to another organization or off to one of the members. Some more common mistakes on AFR since it is that time of the year uh, as well is uh, in, incorrect reporting of membership dues from the national organization. Uh, we have found that there are some chapters out there that are still requiring, I shouldn't say still requiring because it's never permitted, but that are asking for and requiring of their members dues uh, every year. And sometimes they're quite costly. So our bylaws are very, very specific that the only dues of a member in DAB are those that are directed towards their life membership in DAB. Chapter can't have their own internal uh, dues program collection or process. That second line there, not providing legal documents or bequests, trusts, and then in, in uh, uh, most specifically the bequest reporting program. How many of you are aware of the bequest reporting program for national? Some. Um, if you guys listen to the board of directors report, uh, either at the initial board of directors meeting on Friday um, or uh, the report given this morning, you hear a lot these days about funds and donations coming in by way of requests, wills, and um, trusts. We get these all the time. We see these all the time. But one thing that we notice is that on a good occasion, on some occasions, we get it in the mail, it came to us, but it's not, it's not ours. It doesn't belong to the national organization. Somebody dropped it in the mail and sent it to the national organization, but it really was intended for a chapter, or it was intended for a department. So being good stewards of our donors funds and the intent of their donation, obviously, and being legally binding upon the, the request of the trust, we forward it along to the chapter of the department, along with a message saying, hey, we've seen this at national headquarters. <coughs> After reviewing it, it is very clear that either by way of the name of the entity on the request of the trust, or the address used for the request of the trust, or the EIN number used for the request of the trust, this clearly belongs to your chapter, <coughs> or your department. So that was becoming more and more frequent. So that kind of started the process of, of uh, our legal team thinking, it's like, this is happening to us all the time. Certainly it's gotta be happening at the chapter level and the department level as well. So therefore, that is what prompted the creation of the Quest Reporting Program. So anytime a chapter or department receives a legal document of a request for a trust, along with a check, whatever the case might be, that information has to be uploaded and provided to the, organization, the national organization to make sure that those funds are truly intended for the chapter or the department. And again, it's all of our intent to have the best wishes and uphold the final wishes of uh, a person's intent of their uh, donation. So very seldom when a request or a trust is reported through the request reporting program, do we ever identify and say, well, hey, Chapter one is really truly is yours, it was intended to become national. But it does happen. And that was the, that was the wish of the decedent. So we certainly want to make sure legally that we follow their uh, wishes. Uh, and it just keeps everybody honest, it keeps everybody out of trouble. And again, we do it regularly. Any request, any trust that we get, the exact same scrutiny and evaluation goes into it. We want to make sure that the proper entity is receiving the actual gift. Probably one of the biggest uh, mistakes that we see um, in uh, 
any of those entities that have large uh, fundraising operations throughout the course of the year that generate more than $300,000 of income requires a CPA review by a certified public accountant. Um, you notice that uh, a lot of times somebody might have, or a chapter or a department might have a building um, that they sell. They're no longer using it. They don't need it. They acquired it. They sold it. They bought. They got a bequest that resulted in them having over three hundred thousand dollars of income during the year. If there's one event or one activity that occurred during the course of the year that put the chapter or the department over that three hundred thousand dollar threshold, as long as we've got documentation to assure ourselves that that's where the funds came from. Nine times out of ten, we'll waive the requirement of that CPA review because CPA reviews are not—they're not cheap. They're not as expensive as a CPA audit, um, but still, we certainly want to make sure that we're not wasting donors' monies and uh, spending them on CPA reviews. So, uh, if, if you do have a request or trust that comes in that is rather large, put you over that three hundred thousand uh, dollar figure. Give us a call because we're more than likely we'll waive that. Save you guys seven, eight, nine thousand dollars in that CPA when we look at your books. In closing, um, how many of you have called or been called from national headquarters from membership or court liaisons about your annual financial report? Either received a call, an email from either April Pierce, Denise Br uh, Brumagen, others from the membership staff. Warren, I see you back there. You guys get that every year. <laughs> <laughs> you figure by, by this time you've had it all figured out. But <laughs> so our membership liaisons um, that oversee and look at and kind of crunch the numbers on these annual financial reports are there just I mean, they're doing what they're supposed to be doing. So if they do reach out to you and they ask you for specific information, whether it's uh, from a donation that was made or to justify or validate a donation that was made or an expenditure that was made or to validate uh, a source of income that the chapter received, um, just remember that you know they're doing their job. They want to keep everybody above board. Um, and try not to give them a too hard of a time. So probably the best way to ensure as a treasurer of the chapter of department is to keep running balance, right? Um, don't wait until June 30th to now all of a sudden pull out all the receipts, all the expenditures, all the bank statements, and sit down and spend two days going through everything and then trying to match up to a specific line. So keep a running balance at the beginning of the year. So July 1st. This is our beginning balance. As you have income, as you have expenses occur during the course of the year, make those immediately. So that at the end of the year on June 30th, all you have to do is print a report that is in line, and you can certainly use QuickBooks or any other uh, accounting software that is readily available out there over the counter to put together a program that is a mirror of our annual financial report. So that you can have, you know, all of your service expenditures are clearly loaded, uh, noted on line 12. And keep that running tally during the course of the year. So come June 30th, you guys can be one of the first to get your reports into us uh, between August 1st and, or I'm sorry, uh, July 1st and September 30th. So it certainly makes it easier for you as a chapter makes it easier for our uh, membership report liaisons, um, and it prevents a lot of confusion in terms of uh, going back and forth with questions um, between chapters during the course of the